Today we are talking about aperture control. And if you want to go back to my last video, if you haven't seen it already, we were talking about mouthpiece pressure and how mouthpiece pressure really can be detrimental to a lot of players. If you don't know the story and you want to go back and watch that video, when I was younger, I began the very first day as a pressure player, really pulling the mouthpiece into my lips and against my teeth. And that reduced the amount of space I had to let my lips vibrate. It also cut off the blood supply to my lips and it was detrimental to my playing for many years. In fact, uh, since I started Harrelson Trumpets in reality to help myself be a better player, um, what I was doing in the beginning was studying the physics of the embouchure and how the human body interacts with the instrument to create all the different pitches and dynamics and tone colors. So I was very interested in improving my own playing when I started this company. And I didn't know it would become a trumpet company. So today we're gonna to talk about the first real piece of understanding how and why mouthpiece pressure is detrimental to your playing, why I really focus more on the mechanics and the, the underlying um, basis of how physically this uh, the embouchure works rather than pressure itself. So I don't really spend a lot of time talking about mouthpiece pressure. Instead, I really focus on all the fundamental pieces that make up the mechanisms that create the pitches for you. And uh, this is going to be true really for all players, unless of course you're using some kind of outside apparatus. So the first part that we're going to talk about today is aperture. Now I could start with any of the pieces. There's no first part that's really number one most important. They're all equally important. But today we're going to talk about aperture. And we're going to define that because a lot of people may have heard it in passing uh, or saw the word somewhere, but you don't really know what aperture is. And what I teach and what I've taught for 20 some years is aperture control embouchure. And what that means, or ACE, A-C-E, what that means is that we are using our own physical ability to move things in our body to change pitch rather than relying on um, squeezing the aperture uh, tighter with pressure or with reduced space. I'm really talking about controlling it with your lips. So today we're going to talk about that. Uh, if you noticed, I was playing that little part. I just made this up. And down when I play that A A. I'm just literally on camera focusing on changing my aperture size and shape. So I'm changing it from say this opening to something smaller, almost closed, and then back open again. So when I'm playing low to high, or doing lip slurs, <clears throat> I'm literally blowing air. Say that I go from slow to fast air or an open aperture to a really closed aperture. When I'm doing that, I'm going from here to there. And this is my hole. So it's going from really open to really closed. And that's how I do this. <laughs> going from open to closed. <clears throat> that is aperture control. So I'm leaving enough space for my lips to be able to move, meaning the distance between my teeth and my mouthpiece is wide enough that my lips can then be moving around like this. And they are. They are moving around like that. Um, and I'm changing aperture size. I'm not going to tell you exactly how to hold your lips, but today's lesson, we're really talking about how we do that, and part of it is changing the aperture. Now, is air velocity part of that? Yes. Is the durometer or lip tension part of that? Yes. 
There are many other factors and we're going to talk about them lesson by lesson and introduce them to you slowly so you start to understand these concepts. The reason we're doing that is because I have actually released everything all in one package video for 12, 13 years now and most of you never watched the video because it was too long, you found it too boring, or you never found it. Or if you did watch it, it was too much to digest all at once. I've given clinics and master classes on this topic for, uh, let's see, the first one would have been in 1992, maybe? Yeah, 1992. So that's a long time ago, actually. So 27 years ago. And so this isn't something new, and it's really built on a lot of other players' techniques that I've learned and studying physics, the embouchure, brass acoustics, all those things. So I put all that together. Aperture control is the first thing we're talking about. There are many other pieces to the embouchure that have to be balanced. So don't think this is the only video or the only concept you need. This is just one little piece and uh, I'll give them all to you. If you want to learn them all right now today and you feel like you're ready, then look up my Trumpet Momentum series or watch one of my longer clinics uh, on YouTube. So I wanna thank you today. I'm gonna demonstrate this one more time. I'm literally just changing the aperture size. That's all I'm doing. I'm just changing that rather than adding or decreasing the space, adding extra pressure. So that would be number one in our really mouthpiece pressure relief uh, episode or series. I wanna point out this horn very quickly because I make my living making a lot of videos for you guys, um, but really on my instruments. And like any business, we're a small business. There are only four of us here that work at Harrelson Trumpets. And the four of us work really hard to provide the best uh, quality and versatile um, solutions to you in terms of mouthpieces, mod kits, and full trumpets, and other things. So I wanna remind you, we do have a, a really cool Kickstarter coming up for an accessory for Bach trumpets. You wanna check that out because it's something all of you can use and it's very inexpensive. It's only gonna be the 10 to $20 range. Um, and I wanna point out this horn. This is the Harrelson X17. It's part of a prototype series. That is a really nice horn that is uh, one of our lighter weight models. And if you have watched this far, then you can now see the promo code. And if you wanna purchase this horn, that promo code is only available on YouTube videos and it's only valid through this Friday. So I wanna thank you again for watching. Check out our next episode uh, in a few days.